find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron from the Twitter for the awesome cast. This is episode 254, and this is the show where we get geeky, talk tech, and have so much fun here with the geeks using the geeky things in the geeky Pittsburgh. Uh, again, on the couch with me, back in Studio A, and, and just in time for that gonzo pizza that we happen to get this week, it is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How's it going? How you good doing, to be back sir? In Studio a. It was a good. It was a good week. It was a good week for you to come back. And there for was sure. there's gonzo pizza. I mean, there's. Oh. Plenty of reasons to be here. <laughs> Certainly. And we have so much to talk about. It's just, just the two of us today. Uh, but we'll get right into it. Please check us out at awesomecast.net. You can follow us on the Instagram. Yeah, the, the Instagram is me, uh, mostly. You're just putting some video on there and Snapchatting and such. It's Sorgatron on all those formats. Uh, but you can follow us at awesomecast on the Twitter, also on the Google Plus, on the Facebook, and the Facebook group. And uh, you can also please subscribe to us on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and follow us here live around. Around 6 37 p.m. Eastern at live.awesomecast.net. Join us in the live chat room, just like Wheels does every week. What's up, Wheels? Making you want the pizza. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, oh, hey, no, I keep from it. I keep forgetting to mention this. You know, we have a Patreon. Yes. We have a Patreon. If you guys are digging the show, if you guys are finding a value out of it, or at least an entertainment value out of it, I guess, um, um, please go, uh, even if it's a, a penny, I think you can put a penny in there. You can put like a 50 cents a month, whatever the case may be, wherever you can chip in. It's a, it's a, you know, a way that we're, we're trying to build up the show. We've had some success with it with the Wrestling Mayhem show. We've had it on here for a while and, uh, and also kind of figuring out what, what can we give you guys back in, in some extra value uh, for those those of you guys that are given a dollar or anything like that uh we've developed we, I mean, we still need to develop it here for this show we well first we need somebody to to submit on this show uh but uh you know over there we're doing gold content that we're not given anywhere else um we're doing uh state of the show addresses every month and you know everybody with at a dollar gets that kind of stuff and we've had a few of them over the last few we've had geez we've been to that for maybe almost a year Oh really? It's been yeah, long? yeah. We, we we've had two to two to three people like ever since we started at least. Um, so I mean that's still something that pays for domain names. That pays for uh, that could pay for us maybe moving to a better podcast server. That I'm not worried about shutting down any day now. Uh, you know, for instance, you know, I mean anything to improve the show. So please check it out. Patreon.com/slash AwesomeCast. I'm trying to be on there a little bit more. Uh, and tell people that maybe come across and hey, this is the stuff we're doing. And of course, we're doing Awesome Chat, and we'll talk a little bit later in the show about what's happening with Awesome Chat this week. Something a little different, a little fun, and I think uh, podcasters, fellow podcasters listening, uh, or social media people in general, may be interested in that. So let's get into it with the awesome thing of the week and we got a few fan submitted ones but first chilla i want to touch base with you what's what's yours so i had a decision to make and i've been weighing that decision back and forth and back and forth and back and forth mm -hmm. and I, many trips to the apple store were made um oh no and i went from think really thinking long and hard about the new macbook uh-huh um, very nice, very lightweight. Did I, you did you factor in the dongles? I factored in the dongles. Dongle factor is in full effect. Yes. And which I don't I wouldn't mind the dongles because I carry I carry all the video dongles and a lot of the different dongles for the air. Right. Um but that actually the dongle that dongle consideration was was taken into account because I had those dongles. Okay. The other thing is, is I have the uh, Apple cinema display at home with Thunderbolt. Um so Jeez. I, <laughs> Jeez. I actually, you, man, you go all out. <laughs> so I actually ended up with the new 2015 MacBook Pro. I didn't even realize that was a new one. Holy, holy crap. Two, oh, it doesn't have stickers on it. That's why. Yeah. I got, I actually need to get a new case. Um, That's nice. The spec case. It has the force touch. So I have mm -hmm. force touch on my watch and on my trackpad. Oh, it's got the force touch. Yes. Oh, no. I got it. You got to let me play with that a little bit after the show. Real <laughs> um, quick. I don't have the beta running on it. So it really, oh. other than your typical force touch stuff. Right, right. You can feel it. It feels like a click. That's but what it, now force touch is going to unlock that, new content. So the force touch, for those who don't know. So basically the force touch is 
Um, so is it the haptic feedback it's on the haptic there? Feedback. So there's no actual click. Like even if you have a MacBook, I mean, with any any you know, you have a button or or is the pad and you push down on, even though it looks like just one square pad, a piece of glass or whatever it is on there, um, metal, I guess. Is it glass? I feel like it's glass. Yeah, someone is it, is, is they it, claim it's glass. Like it, it feels like it's a glass it, piece. It, it like is that. very smooth but but the idea is there's no actual physical thing that clicks anymore it is not a button it's a touch thing but it feels your pressure and it gives you what a feedback little bit right just like that little tap on the arm that the apple watch gives you am, am i am i is it fair to kind of compare that oh, so so here i'm gonna get up i'm coming off the couch oh no where's it what is what's he going are you going to come over here he's coming over here he's going to join me on camera a um <laughs> Your mind will be blown. He's coming so, over here. We got the MacBook. We're so, going to try not to so, drop it. So tap, tap like you, like push down. So so it feels like I'm pushing a button. Now push down even harder. And I push down more, and it gives you like a second tap to tell you you're tapping. But it feels exactly like you're tapping the typical trackpad. Wait, is it like a tiny tap that I'm feeling? There's a there's like a here, let me see. Yeah. So there's a tap, and then there's a. Like there's a second. Oh, tap. I f no, I feel your tap. That feels. This is weird. <laughs> oh wow! Like so, it feels like it's clicking back into another position. Yeah. Like it's you're pushing the button down harder into another position. But it's not going anywhere. No, oh wow! It's a so nothing's happening. It's just vibrating back with you. This is not moving. This is a physical piece. Like I, you can see it moving on mine. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at that, oh there, the white balance. That's what happens to the white balance when we hold hold up a screen. Um, wow. So it's such it, you wouldn't know otherwise this is the geekiest freaking thing right that that you're like it's not a real button but it feels like a real button and it feels like two real buttons in the and long I, run yeah and i i we, we i took carla into the apple store and i said mm -hmm. hey, hey tap this isn't this awesome and she's like yeah it's it's it clicks like i'm like a trackpad and i'm like but it's not clicking. It's vibrating it's back against your, your finger. It's, it's in your all in head. your head, man. It's magic. It's it is magic. It's 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 fantastic. Now, I, what I'm interested in really seeing but, is man. In, this is everybody is not an Apple <laughs> fan. It's just like these oh these guys are just just pushing it over the limit this week. Um, but, but 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 seriously, you have to try, wander your wander your Microsoft or, or Android butt into a, a, a an Apple store and check it out. Well, and, what and I'm like, wondering is, will they put this in the trackpad? Like mm -hmm. the full size trackpad, you can get as an external unit, and even pair with other OSs. And I've been wanting to get one of those for a while for for just for the office computer mm -hmm. a little bit, just because I just hate fussing with the mouse and everything. I have a Microsoft mouse and keyboard actually in there uh, that I've remapped so the Windows key is in the right mm -hmm. place for for command everything. Um, but but still, like that, yeah, that's cool. What's what's what I'm really interested in is that deeper tap. Mm -hmm. is going to have other function in the future. So if you're on a website and you want you don't know what a word means, you can highlight it and do that that deeper tap and it's going to it's going to reveal additional like a dictionary, content like a dictionary or something. I mean when you think about think think about so you now have left click right click. You're going to when you're think about when you're video editing and or or working with Wirecast. <sighs> wow. You now have a they could allow Damn you it. to have additional Damn it, Wirecast is Wirecast is on a PC though. <laughs> oh. I, I mean I I have, I have a Mac version too, but but we we operate here on a PC. What would be interesting is if if they if they transition it to the trackpad, the external Bluetooth trackpad which yeah. is bigger. Yeah. And they let you pair it with Jeez. A, 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 because a I'm Windows always, machine. I'm always so frustrated. This, this, this is kind of a spin off from this, but I'm always so frustrated because they, they got me uh, an iMac. So I think it's a 2011 iMac. It's actually kind of feeling it's kind of feeling its age a little bit now. But um, it came with one of those magic mice that has the touch on the top. Mm -hmm. But what kills me, and this is something, even just like the regular mouse with the ball that could go sideways as well, you could go sideways and, and move along the timeline. I get lost and I can't move along a timeline. Or I, I, I got stuck yesterday because I was in the little asset menu and I couldn't make it go sideways to see the names. Like you, you mm -hmm. lose the, the 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 scroll bar. One of the things that I hate about Mac OS is is that disappearing scroll bar and you can't find it again. And if you don't have something like a touchpad that will react horizontally to something you're you end up kind of stuck or i'm just missing something maybe there's a power user thing i'm missing there is uh, so cool. let, let, let's go back to mac 101 okay go into your system preferences oh no system preferences and go into general 
and you have an option show scroll bars when oh automatically based on mouse or trackpad when scrolling or always where wait i'm in, i'm in, i'm i'm in here and where where do i go general go to general it's the oh, first it's the icon first one okay the second section down the first option is show scroll bars and then you can set it to automatically based well, on mouse or trackpad. I'm not going to change it on this, but everything I have with a mouse, it is changing <laughs> over the next week. And there there are times that I definitely want it um, always. So I do come in here and, and flip-flop back and forth. Okay. But that's your tip of the week. But, but if you have a touchpad, you can move whatever, and it does, it's not a problem. Yeah, and like, you're right. The, 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 the magic mouse with the with the way that works it's so limited it's too, it's it's too so small limited and and if it's touchy you're, you end up like moving windows and not even knowing it <laughs> you know so awesome so 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 basically your is your awesome thing the 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 laptop or the mouse pad it's it's the laptop it's the laptop i, mean, I can okay. open up like many many chrome windows i was pretty much limited to like four what'd you have before or five um the the 2011 Okay. MacBook Air. Okay. It had an i7. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But still, it was probably like a. I mean, it, it, that's the thing. Like the one, the one I'm using at at, at at my one client is it's a two. You know, it's an i7 2011. It's a 23 inch iMac. It's beautiful, right? But again, it's starting to feel that. And we, I think we put eight or 16 gigs in there. Yeah. But it's just it's at that mm -hmm. point where it's just kind of feeling that it probably needs a reformat to be honest. I when mean, the air I I've yeah and I know my and Mac my Mini does right. my Mac Mini does but I don't want to have to reinstall like old Final Cut so I have DVD Studio on there and mm -hmm. go through that whole process again, but yeah. So so I'm I'm definitely enjoying it. I've had it, um, oh geez, probably four or five days now, um, and I am I'm definitely loving it. The one thing I found interesting is is they got rid of the MacBook on the front. Like you're used oh, to saying that, that it says it on the front. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say MacBook. Oh wait, anymore. yeah, but mine doesn't either. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I'm just used to seeing that, and I've never noticed it. And I've owned this thing for uh, about a year, just over a year. So. And and not to cut on the on the MacBook, mm -hmm. not the not the Air, not the, the new Pro, one. but the new MacBook, the fancy one you can get in gold. And I I read a lot of reviews, and I want to run VMs. And okay. Eight, some people said they had no problems running Windows 7 in a VM. Some people said it was a horrible experience. I think it depends on the... Doesn't it depend on the stress of what you're doing? Because okay, a VM, virtual machine, those aren't, aren't familiar. You could be running the simplest of applications in it. You could be running something 3D, right? Mm -hmm. and, and if you're that higher end, it's going to feel it because it's a software layer on top of a software layer and... and it's going to take more to do that. Plus, you're running two OSs at the same time. I've ran par parallels in the, in the past when we had some legacy issues when we moved over to the Macintosh at a video house. So, and it's it's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely tough. So, th so that was my main the main driver. And when I was reading a lot of their reviews, it said you know, it's it's its scores came a lot in pair or on par with the 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 MacBook or Air that I had, which. I was like, do I really want to just just to drop the weight, mm -hmm. pick up the the MacBook and have to buy a bunch of dongles that I already have the dongles for, and I can no longer use my Thunderbolt display, and I mean there were just so many ands, and yeah. it was all going back to the weight, and I just couldn't I I couldn't justify that thing is not for power users yeah so just it, but I'll tell you what I mean the, don't get me wrong the MacBook Air I still compress video on it i still use i mean iMovie and um pretty much anything i want to throw at it mm -hmm. or final cut launches and runs fine and that's the one thing that that's the one thing that had me clinging on the macbook was they have final cut on the macbook in the apple store yeah and it loads up fine it compresses fine it, it runs relatively well mm -hmm. now what you can't do is fire up Chrome and eight browser windows and, and Final Cut and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and and that's where I, I felt like where, I couldn't fully stress test this, it. This is where I also have a 2011 MacBook, Mac Mini, and it's an i5. 
And uh, that's I also have so many drives hooked up to it, and I think it has a because it's like it has my Google Music for syncing, it has the now the Google Photos for syncing, mm-hmm. it has a few other things up there, Backblaze, uh, Google Drive. So I think I'm kind of like overloading it, and 16 gigs and everything too. But again, I think like, I think I think there's something going on with the drive. Something weird is happening with my Drobo, and I think it's just dragging the entire system down. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's just. It needs a reformat, but I have so much stuff on that 500 gigabyte drive that I hadn't moved yet just because really just poor file management over the years. Um, <laughs> it just builds up. Um, but but, but now, now I also have a place to put El Capitan. El Capitan. I can, I can, put, it on, I can put it on the air. Have you heard the song for it yet? No, I yeah, have There's not. a song. OPM did a song called El Capitan oh, for a few I'll years ago. Up. You should probably look. I, I have it. I can. I can Where'd you, you get just that? just YouTube it. What? That, you know my Gorillapod? I've yeah. had that forever. Oh, have you? I've had it forever, and I haven't had a reason to use it a lot until Periscope. I was about to Periscope you. Yep. Nice. You know, because we don't... I actually, that's one thing that I would like to get. Is is a Gorillapod? Well, Gorillapod, and I want the I one that's, that's magnetic. I don't even know why I got this originally. There's this, and you've seen the Gorillapod um, Mac, or iPad case I have, too, right? No, I haven't. Because that's for the, um, that's how we uh, teleprompt. It's uh, because I use Teleprompt Plus still. It's an older version. Uh, on the iPad 1, it still works fine. And uh, that's why that's why I keep an iPad one around in case I need to teleprompt something. And that's what we use for the entire two and a half year run of Unsung. Well, after iOS five was being you know supported, and yeah, dude, if you, Joby Gorilla Pods are the best freaking investment ever. I took this thing. Uh, we were we were doing um, Sawtooth Willie Sunday morning, and you know over there behind you, you see there's some some pipes above where we film Sawtooth Willie. So I just took this thing and just wrapped it around the pipe above. And uh, we had a high shot of Sawtooth Willie for the Periscopers. So it's it's pretty fantastic. You can put it anywhere. Only thing is I got to watch is I can't like tie it to my video camera stand because if I, I still get tweets and stuff and it'll vibrate and you'll hear that on the microphone if I'm using like a shotgun or something like that. So I had that problem. I was holding a camera like shortly after I got the Pebble watch and it kept buzzing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I have to use this audio <laughs> on the camera. Oh, no. Or I might. We had a couple sources just in case, and I didn't trust the other sources. Anyways, so what is my awesome thing of the week? I forget. <laughs> Did you put it in the doc? Uh, no, because it was just the thing that I had used recently, and I can't remember what it is. So let's touch on the other ones. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm completely blanking. I'm so sorry. Uh, so we'll touch on the other ones. We had uh, this one from Chachi. He'll come back to me. He'll come back to me eventually. Uh, well, hey, first, Alex Carr is out there in California. He says he's uh, working with the uh, new Mac Pro at camp. He, he's had some... I keep forgetting. He's told me before, but it's, it's some kind of interesting camp, and they're obviously doing a lot of multimedia stuff there, too. And he's, he's mostly, I guess, a camp counselor of some sort. Uh, where they have Mac Pros? Where they have Mac Pros. I want to go to that camp. I know, right? <laughs> I uh, He's got to write in and remind me. I know he's written in before. It escapes me at the moment, just like I forgot my awesome thing of the week. But uh, uh, he says they were using the new Mac Pro at camp to deal with all the media stuff, especially videos. We affectionately call it the trash can. There you go. Um, and also, almost dropped the thing. Uh, and also one from Chachi. Oh, this was awesome. We were listening to this. This is a report, actually, from uh, BBC World. And uh, basically, they're aiming to 3D print a bridge. As in, they start on one side, they're 3D printing, the ink is steel, basically, and uh, they start at one end, and it builds it out to the other. It's a Dutch design fir- firm, uh, MX3D. We retweeted it over on Awesome Cast on the Twitters. I'll try to make sure this gets shared out otherwise as well. Um, but yeah, they're, they're about to print a steel bridge across the canal in Amsterdam. The printer will build the bridge as, as it goes along, so uh, there won't be any need for scaffolding or for workers to assemble the steel parts together. Together. Well, there's a bunch of people out of jobs, mm-hmm. so uh, so it's going to be all one ginormous piece. I guess, yeah. The printer will build the bridges as it goes along. Yeah, it's so you. So instead of well, you know, I think there's a lot of like lack of failure points. If it's just one piece of steel that's formed in such a way, think of if you could just cast a bridge. You don't because it's mm-hmm. too big. It's too you, big. You you can cast giant pieces that are huge. Uh, but my my father used to work in a foundry, and he talked about like here here's this big piece that's coming out. You see the trucks, you see the wide loads. If you're going up uh, I seventy nine mm-hmm. or wherever, you know those were made and 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 some cast mold. And I did work, of course, with the steel industry as well with videos. Um, they have somebody made a giant mold of that girder, 
and they cast steel, like hot molten steel, into that, and that's how they make that. I'm I'm, I'm no engineer, but that's what I've I've observed. So. Obviously, you're not making an entire bridge in one piece. Nothing is that big. We cannot physically handle something that big and alone transport it, right? Mm -hmm. You'd almost have to cast it right there. And this solves that problem. Presuming the 3D printing steel is is structured enough and works. I I just picture like the liquid metal as it or liquid steel as it's dripping (laughs) out, like being like the Terminator. It just it just morphs into some a bunch of a bunch of tiny Terminators. It's incredible. Maybe this, maybe, this is the, the maybe this is how the uh, Transformers got their start. The Transformers? Yeah. I, well, if you go into the origin of the Transformers, there's the AllSpark. And no, we're not getting into that part. Sorry <laughs> about that. It's a different podcast. Uh, but no, okay. And I remembered what my thing was. I got to work with, I'm just kind of geeking out over this. There's no real tech angle to this other than I got to play with this. I have not got. To, I have not had the opportunity to play with a drone. But okay. I've had the opportunity to play with drone footage today. Huh. Um, we'll have a client that uh, from somewhere across America uh, in some other state that brings, begins with an O uh, that uh, they're doing they, they have one of those drones and, and the cool thing is because he showed he, he sent me some of the information and you see you basically work in the coordinates and where you want the camera to point you let it go you just plan it out in the coordinates and, and which way like the video camera is going to go and it looks like it all does it automatically because he, he showed me the flight routes and everything and where things were aiming. And, and I got the footage and he's like, put it together. So, so the drone has like GPS and everything yeah, else and it, yeah. it can figure it out. That looks like, yeah. It's it's not your it's not your off-the-shelf $50 drone. Oh, it's not a $50 drone. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I haven't seen the drone or anything like that. I think he told me what model it was. Um, so I, I could probably go in and, and look at that. But uh, it's kind of, uh, this came up and it was a random... There's a sound somewhere. Um, there, it, it was pretty random opportunity that kind of came across. I'm, you know, I'm really surprised I, it, it kind of came up out of nowhere. But um, yeah, so I get to play with the drone footage, and I'm hoping this leads to a little bit more work with them. And uh, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. Just I'm just kind of geeking out over that. that I get Very to play cool. drone footage. So so the next, I mean, obviously I'm not going to fly a drone anytime soon unless I get that fifty dollar one and crash it into a building a couple of times, and then I can move up. Right, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll be able to share that here in the next couple of weeks as things go. Um, so yeah, so in the meantime, hey guys, uh, we are fueled by pizza here in the podcasting land, and uh, uh, thanks to our friends, uh, Chili. Can you get that uh, special one today? I don't know if you can reach it over there, uh, but uh, I'll mute you just in case. Uh, but 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 you know, I'm more fearing that I'm going to drop it. We're going to lose. Oh no! We got somebody else coming. Uh, that pizza enticed somebody to come into the studio later today. I, I had a surprise co-host because I'm like, hey, look what we got here. He better Ooh, get here quick. He better get here quick. Leave that for him. Look at that. <laughs> Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with great pepperoni pizza. And this week, they sent us a gonzo. Well, you can see how much is left. Uh, but no, it, what is, it's goat cheese and spinach and, and bacon and amazing. It's, and it's, gyro, it's gyro meat. It's too, gyro right? meat. That's what it is. Gyro yeah. meat. It's tremendous. It's. I don't think it's even it officially. It's delicious. I'm going to have to close this because otherwise there's going to be no pizza left for No pizza else. left for the other person. They, they sent us an extra one today, a great gonzo pizza. I think they just had a spare or something like that, and that's cool too. Uh, but go, please check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, doing really, really cool stuff, real good to the, you know, recognized in the community here in Pittsburgh. If you're not in the community, say, hey, what's up? Thanks for supporting the awesome cast, me in New Jersey or wherever the heck it is where I have no good pizza. Um I know we have people in Texas that are fawning over our pizza, for instance. S- soon to be delivered uh, by by over overnight mail and also by drone. Yeah, I hope we got I hope we got that uh, application in uh, by the Alpha Lab uh, <laughs> deadline a couple weeks ago. So um, they think I'm joking. They think I'm joking. So I actually got a tweet tonight. It's like, "Where's my facts? Pizza by facts is what we've been talking about with Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, for instance. And uh, but uh, go, please go check them out. They're on the social medias. You'll check out the websites and you'll get hungry too. I guarantee you. Uh, they're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in the Beachview neighborhood, as well as over in Carnegie, PA. Uh, if you can get down there from uh, on your way out or back into town uh, from the airport, and it's a real awesome. Re- Rico, right there, pictured on the front page. He's a really cool dude. And I know he's been really happy with the response he's been getting from you guys. So thank you for walking in the door, getting on the phone, getting on the social medias, and telling them that they heard about Slice on Broadway on the Awesome Cast or one of the fine, fine shows here at Sorgatron Media. So 
you had we were talking about some stuff before the show so uh, in lieu of some news um which we we can still get to, to a couple we got a couple items but uh we're talking social media and particularly snapchat and linkedin and I, I said, I'm trying to, I'm getting back in this. I just fell out. I'm maybe going to try to push for uh, Snapchat a little bit more. And we talked about a little bit of the workflow I'm using mm -hmm. uh, before the show. I, I take a video on Snapchat. And if I like it, because I can experiment, because it's Snapchat, who cares? Uh, you can download it and put it into Instagram. That gives you a nice square video instead of that vertical one that I hate as a video producer. Now you got this nice square video. You can go stick that in Vine or Twitter video. And now. You're good to go. Why don't I share the Twitter from Instagram? Because it doesn't show up. Because they don't do that. Because Twitter has a has a pissing contest with Facebook, <laughs> and uh, and they're not allowed to do that. So so Snapchat's I've been trying to get into, and and I would, I would, and let's say LinkedIn's the other one that we've been talking about. What's been your your thing with Snapchat lately? Where, where have you been hung well, up? Well, I or and I haven't really ever gotten involved in Snapchat, and the only the only Snapchatting that I saw was like. When it first started, and it was more like it was the, the ladies the, and the ladies and the kids, and let me send you a picture of this stupid stuff for mm -hmm. for a few seconds. And back when you they you could screen capture it, and then you'd get notified, and it was like this big hoopla, whatever. And they weren't keeping it on their servers, and there was all what whatever. I I never found like a good use for it mm -hmm. past that until recently they've put some news channels on there and some things of that nature. Have you been watching the Katie Couric? No, I have not. Is that, is that what brought you in? No, Katie Couric? Katie is Couric it, is so lovable. boy. It's America's sweetheart. I'm on Snapchat. <laughs> is that really what drove you to Snapchat? No, absolutely not. Although there's a great story about Katie Couric in uh, Mick Foley's first or second book. So, um, but anyways, no, but yeah, I, I think that's what kind of like, that was the, Hey, CNN is here. This is here. I, I just did a course it was one of the three uh, things that we talked about on a course uh, for nonprofits a, a, a month ago uh, with the library. I mean, people want to get on it, and I think I think who are you following? Are you following anybody significant that's doing fun stuff on there? Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm not, and that's maybe maybe that's part of the problem. And, and one of the things, like I was wondering, what do you get out of Snapchat? And one of the things that's that I'm starting to realize over time is all of, especially Facebook. I'm seeing Facebook fill in some of the Flipboard news gap. You put a lot of Fs in there, man. <laughs> wow. If, if Facebook's really filling in that, that news gap that I was using Flipboard for. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people post an article, and then because they have that, oh, and you might also be interested in these other news articles, from other, and they're from other sites. Right. I see myself sticking on each social network as I go in and I'm it, it's I'm left I'm less apt to do the old school you know flip between the channels type of thing mm -hmm. and I'm more more or less staying on one channel on the social media TV I'm not really looking at it as a news source though I I'm, I really am kind of looking at it as as kind of a sorry and yeah, entertainment, talking with people, you know, I mean, that that's really it. That's, that's really all I have for it, right, mm -hmm. is, is that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of fussing with this so I can show off some Snapchat stuff so I can't bring up the camera. So make so so just pantomime what I'm talking about <laughs> over here. Uh, but anyways, but uh, but no, I, no, generally, I think it's it's a it has to be a fun thing. So it's, you're viewing it more of as a vine or right, as, right. It's a way to those... it's a way to be creative. It's a way to communicate with people and and just kind of have fun with things. See, I guess I, I look. That's kind of like my Twitter. Right. I, I look at Twitter for that kind of thing more and more. Right, right, right. And that's the thing. I, I mean, I I think as a normal person, no, why 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 would you really get into it? But I think as a creative outlet, I think it's it's pretty remarkable for that. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to pull this up here entirely uh yeah it looks like we have some network problems so i, I couldn't pull this up um but anyways no i i think um I, I think generally uh yeah it's fun it's getting a message across um i don't know how to engage back you know mm -hmm. I, i'm not looking at it as an informational source it's kind of uh, the most informational things that i have on here uh, I'll, I'll give you some tips on people to follow uh, one Taco Bell, just because they're the, they're probably the best at it. Okay. Okay. Like as as somebody who's selling something online, uh, Snapatunde is somebody I think 
Is he the one that used to write for The Onion, perhaps? He does a lot of good stories. There's this guy on here that is a director and movie producer, etc. I don't know anything that he's done, but his name is Casey... Oh, uh, why isn't he on here now? Casey Neistat, I think is the name. I don't know why it's not coming up. But he is really good at, because stories are the thing. Like, doing the individual, like, I'm not going to talk to, do a thing and hit all these people and send that out. I'm not, I'm, I'm doing broadcasting on this mm -hmm. thing. I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one things, private things. I don't do a lot private. I mean, it's just me, that's you know, fine. like, hey, check out the stuff we're doing. See, and that's where Here's I some be behind the scenes interested. stuff, you know, when I'm not periscoping, I'm, I'm Snapchatting, right? Um, and, and is that, is that what you're looking yeah, at? And it, like, well, and I'm, I'm just interested in why would, what, what what should be getting me to open even the app to get on there? And that's where I'm having the problem getting into it. It depends on who you follow. Like, yeah. I want to see what some of these people are doing. Like, I have stories. For me, I have stories from the guys, the no-name no -name players doing the awesome Sister Sorella. They're, they're, I think they did some Snapchats from, from the show. Uh, some friends, like Tom up in Erie, Snapatunde is somebody I listen to on podcasts all the time. It does fun stuff. New York Mag on there. New York mm -hmm. Mag, New York Magazine. Uh, they do like interviews with the cartoonists and stuff. It's kind of fun if you're into that. Uh, there's my sister-in-law. There's Bobby. Uh, hi, Bobby Cherry. Uh, Mikey and Bob. They are just all around entertaining. FS Mikey uh, 412 for that one. Uh, let's see who else is on here. Uh, 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 the Verge. Uh, the Real Verge, I think, is their account on here. They will do these mini reviews. Oh, that'd be cool. See, now that I can definitely get That into. you can get into. I think in Gadget's on here. TechCrunch is on here. I, have, I don't have any of them on here. Uh, WWE always does a really good behind-the-scenes shot of, of something, something behind the curtain or people coming out like at a live show. So if I look at, is your profile on there and can I see who you follow? I don't think, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Uh, you, you can follow me and I don't know, let's see, added me, my friends, let me see if I go to a friend. Let's say I go to, uh, hello, Austin. Yeah, I can't see who, who he's followed. Follow? I can see the points he has. It's way more than me. But of course, he just graduated high school, so he's all into the Snapchats. Um, no, I, I, I think that's about it. I could screen cap my list and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I think that's about it. And that's the thing. It's a very, like Instagram used to be. There was no web interface for the longest time in Instagram. Mm -hmm. And this is saying, we're going to be here. We're going to be mobile. And that's it. That's it. You're, you're not going to, and, and that's what the appeal is. I mean, you're not the target. You're not the target. They're trying right. to broaden with this, with this crazy uh, CNN, Katie Couric stuff. That they have going on here, or uh, Comedy Central, Vice is on here, Daily Mail, ESPN. But I mean, and the question is, when is that open to us as content producers? Mm -hmm. When can I have a Sorgatron Media button on here that people can click on, and I can make? Because it's not just. Have you looked in at, at some of this stuff? It's not just little snaps or anything like that. It's this entire animated holy crap thing. With video and articles and multimedia going on, uh, uh, great text, not the stupid stuff that they, they have you do. Um, it's, 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 all, it's produced. It's produced. It is. There's an editor to this that nobody has access to. And what's going to happen when they do? I have a video playing that's all blank, for instance. I wonder if that's supposed to be an ad or something. I mean, that's, it's kind of, I'm trying to get on board with it and figure it out. So I'm not too late when it turns the corner. Mm -hmm. That's that's my angle on it. Y what do you want into it? Maybe for the uh, 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 Goliath National Bank, maybe they <laughs> want to talk to people on Snapchat and they want to figure that out. Right. That's something. But I don't know. You're not in marketing, so. Nah. But that is still something. If you were to become the expert on that. Yeah, but a lot of what I do has to do with internal product management and mobility so if i can reach more of an internal employee audience true, that's true. why i try to definitely wouldn't it be great okay here's my finger here's here's going some social media brainstorming for you what if you on the mobility team started to do uh some regular snapchats like hey here's how you hey uh the new iphone came out here's some some things in it and, and, you, that, and, that's and then you that's, insert it in, will it blend video and, and yeah. have some but i mean it has to be fun i can't think of a way for snapchat that work to work that isn't fun right so show me somebody not doing fun that works on snapchat and now there's some like some charities and stuff but i think it, they boil down to fun okay you know I, I think that's what works for the format it's short it's again unproduced the only mm -hmm. one's doing produced things you look at wwe you look at uh, uh uh taco bell the only they have the same tools you do on here 
but they have more time and interns dedicated to do it <laughs> to figure it out, right? Yeah. That's the difference. And that puts them on this level playing field with you, the individual user that wants to get your agenda across or check out the thing I'm doing over here, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and how are you, you know, what is the audience that you're trying to connect with on here? I mean, I already have people that follow me because of the podcast, because of friendships with other things and, you know, things like that. I don't even know who follows me. Random people follow me. I, I, have, I don't know half of these names. But, and like 15 people look at my snaps every time I put something up. You know, that's significant. I, I think that's significant. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's somebody out there getting, getting a thousand looks through their snaps, but, you know, I'm not on that level. Now, LinkedIn was the other thing you were interested in. And so this is one where I, I again, going to other professionals in the in the mobility realm, and it, it, most of the people that I would probably connect with on LinkedIn, I would potentially connect with on Facebook. Um, right. That being said, I have joined a lot of groups. Um, now, I have a problem with groups. Groups are the spam-tastic underbelly of uh, LinkedIn, it seems to me. And I feel like I, I'm following a lot of people that are more grassroots, created their own group. Right, right, right good. Writing good. what they're doing kind of thing, which I, I feel like I should be supporting those type of people, um, as well as... Um, but I do feel like a lot of those, a lot of that content is duplicated elsewhere, and I feel like there's not a huge need for me to grab it off there because I could get the same type of content mm -hmm. from somewhere else. It's almost like when you, when you hit, when you hit nine to five Mac, um, I'm more called of Android, um, uh, Android central and, and, and a couple other sites every day. And you see that same headline article and Google news, right. you see that same headline article everywhere. I feel like it's just another source for those headline articles, and I want to get the content that's a little more. And I think I think it's a uh, the curation of who you follow. Yeah. For instance, it, you know, um, unfortunately, since you're already going to a lot of those sources, you don't see much different when you go on there and you look at the experts in your field. Right. I imagine for you, it's devices technology right mm -hmm. i mean you're already getting your fill of that from and they're just glomming off of that stuff i mean i repost i i don't repost a lot that kind of stuff that goes to my twitter account because i don't want i want there to be a different audience here for me and this is again kind of looking at the way i what am i posting on there how am i broadcasting on there versus what am i getting from it now i notice now, now i post basic ergonomics i do a blog every week that I put to the newsletter, and it's kind of like, hey, please sign up to my newsletter, but here's the blog from it. You mm -hmm. know, it's still content that I put there and on my blog. Um, and I'm getting a lot of traction off of that. But also, I'm finding discussions on there that I'm not having with other other places with similar people. A good friend, Doug, for instance, he's doing a lot of social media, ad-based stuff. Um, John Chamberlain, you jag off. A lot of social media discussion is happening. I'm actually, I, I've really been pleased the last couple months. Um, there's been a lot of commentary talk between the three of us, you know, and some other people popping in there, you know, some some friends of the friends of friends and, and, and such like that, that, that are into this, that we don't have a deep, so, you can't have a deep social media conference, uh, uh, deep social media conversation so much on Twitter. Mm -hmm. where I do follow all these people and uh, maybe John, you jag off. It's a, he's not going to have that conversation as you jag off as much, I think as John Chamberlain on there. Okay. So I think it's, it's, Oh, we're in a safe space to talk about these sorts of things in a businessy way, not in a fun da 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 da, -da way. Right. Um, now I could, same could be said. I can have the same conversations over on Google plus, but I'm not connected to those people in the same way over there. Right. And, there's, and that's where I, I feel like Google Plus is always a fun social network to hit because you do get all those people that you don't typically follow on any other social network. Right, right, right. So, I mean, I have, I, I am on, I'm part of podcasting groups on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google Plus, but Google Plus is by far the best two groups that I belong to. And I have gotten so much podcast, podcasters group therapy and podcast equipment experts, I think it is. Oh, well, my internet's not working over here. But uh, like the, the those the wrestling is just a generalized what the hell is going on. But when I put my stuff to those groups, I try to con 
I'm not so much grumping on everybody else's conversation, but when I put my videos and clips from Mayhem Show on there, I try to ask questions, engage with these guys, and they're popping right back to me. And and we're we're getting some really cool stuff going. So I mean, would, this would almost be like a fun conversation to have at PodCamp, like a. <laughs> Hey, how do you do that? Or how can I get information? I miss those. Like, yeah. Let's how just do we have figure these, it out on the fly? These round tables, right? <laughs> right. How are you using such and such? Right. right? Um, and I think I think we could brainstorm some stuff on this. Off, remember, off remember air, back. Right? Remember back. It was like PodCamp four or five, where they had the breakout room, mm-hmm. and it was like an mm-hmm. impromptu room. Well, there was um, there was always a breakout room. There was sometimes the loungy lounge were like, I have a question. Can the somebody la- please answer yeah, me? Some experts lounge. would be there. I'd lo- I'd love to do that again. Um, but yeah, there would always be uh, uh, uh hey, um, te- somebody teach me how to use X. Yes. So you could do like somebody teach me why the heck I need to know link- LinkedIn, right? And you do a session. Anybody from either end of the of the spectrum <clears throat> can come and do that. You could use it as a tool and say, hey, can somebody teach me this, please? Somebody, mm-hmm. you know, and, and do that. And it, maybe it's on the schedule or we had these fill-in spots, you know. I mean, I think you know, a lot of times I think that happens in the hallway too now too. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I, I and and I think there's opportunities. There's there's um like I've seen meetup groups all the time for say WordPress. You know, uh, WordPress beginners novice groups, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a friend said, "Hey, somebody, can we have a, a a WordPress sit down sometime so I can figure my blog out?" You know, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that stuff, kind of, but there needs to be a resource, doesn't there? Yeah, right. Um, man, he got me itching my brain again. Well, I like that. I liked the concept of the loungy lounge where you could go in and ask any question. Now we're reminiscing on yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Back show in gone? The day. Where is the show gone? But no, this is this is this is uh, entirely, I think, within the wheelhouse here. Um, but I mean, this is where I played with it. Maybe we should do. I mean, I kind of started a social media show because that's what I end up talking about on my personal show. Um, but I'd love to have kind of a QA kind of something, mm-hmm. you know, where we can help people out. So well, I feel like you really get to you get to add to your repertoire of, of how you can do something or accomplish something by, by having those conversations. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, and I actually put this in the app of the week. Um, one of the things I work with a lot at work is the uh, documentation. And, and when you think about documentation in days of old and it was take a word doc, put all your pictures in there, or put wrap some text around it. And here's your kind of how to or here's your your document or your, your guide per se. Um, now you have content management systems like WordPress um, or, or larger enterprises may use some kind of home built SharePoint or, or interweb or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but, but getting that content, it's not as easy as taking a screenshot and, co- and copying and pasting. You got to save it as a file. Sometimes do some nice, Nice editing of the picture and, and put some borders on <laughs> and it. And you know what? The same thing happens. I, I have some guys that are in WordPress and, and have to be like, hey, why don't you not put a picture centered between your paragraphs regardless of the size <laughs> every time? Do a little justify left or right. Play with the format a little bit, right? But, but, and one of the things that I, I found recently, and I, I'm, I'm definitely stealing this from another podcast because it was one of their things of the week. Um, oh, your app of the week! My you app of the week hmm. is, and I have like I wish I knew how this company got their name and why they named their it's app. This so weird. <laughs> so the the app is Lice Cap. It's all one word, and it, it's in capitals: capital L, capital I, capital C, capital E, and then lowercase cap C A P. Hmm. And what this does, and I don't even know know how we should pronounce the company name. Um, Kako. Cocos, Cocos, um, C O C K O S incorporated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what they allow you to do is, um, partition off a portion of your screen and record directly to GIF or GIF, depending on how you are. Is this it. what Verge is using? I have no clue. Cause Verge always has like an, uh, a, uh, a screen cap GIF of some sort. Or, and I think they also do it sometimes of, um, like apps too. Mm-hmm. Like this is how you get around the app and do this. You know, oh, inbox came out. This is what the swipe thing looks like, which they could be just using along with that uh, video trick in uh, QuickTime X that you, yeah. you talked about. That I was trying to kick out. So, here. so it, it's 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 interesting that 
I, I think this has been around for quite some time. Like yeah, it looks very 2010. old. 2010. There's, there's not much to this. Yeah, there, it's been around since 2010. It does come in a in a in a Windows and an OS X. Is it free? OS 10 flavor. Um, yeah, it's free. Wow. Oh, and, and the other thing is, look at the look at the installation size. Windows 220k. 700k for uh, <laughs> 700K. for the Mac. Holy crap! Well, I mean, it's super small, super lightweight, and it gets the job done. Um, they do seem to to be trying to push forward with their their Mac side. Mm -hmm. um, Windows, it seems like they've definitely paid a little more attention to and put a little more spit shine and polish on. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely a cool way to get a concept or to get some kind of tutorial or lesson out there on the on the internet's extremely quick without having to do a lot of craziness. Awesome. Nice little utility there. Yeah. Be good it's for blogs. And good for blogs. Because, again, you can illustrate something like that. Especially if you're doing something that's talking about, yeah, oh, geez, now you got me. Maybe I'll have to do, uh, maybe I'll have to try this for one of my uh, weekly blog posts. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is how you go into Twitter and do this and add video or something, right? Yeah. I mean, you can completely do that. That's awesome. All right. Uh, by the way, we did have a comment via direct message from Missy, wife of the show. Uh, I use LinkedIn solely for business. Facebook for primarily family. Twitter is friends. I mean, there's that separation too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, some people bleed over for whatever reason. But but again, I think that was a problem. I looked at LinkedIn and was like, why am I doing this? This is Facebook for business. Why do I need to talk to businesses? And a disclaimer: I did actually a uh, article on why the heck should I be using LinkedIn, and this is how I found my purpose uh, two weeks ago on the blog. Uh, you can check that out at Sorgatron.com. I have a couple some tips for for how to do that too. Uh, LinkedIn is uh, business Facebook for her. And that's really what it is. That's that's how you got to think of it. And, and I think the the big thing if you're like I have a job, why should I be doing this? Um, can't remember where I got this from, but the idea is LinkedIn. If you just lost your job and you need to use LinkedIn to find a new one, you're mm -hmm. already too late. Oh. You should, be, you should be using LinkedIn now. You should be working on your relationships now. You should be networking now. Mm -hmm. So that later, when something comes up, you're like, hey, hello, so-and-so. We had a nice conversation about such and such that I'm, you know, uh, showed you I know, knew a bit about a thing. Uh, you got any job openings over there? You know, I mean, because that's, that's what it is. Anybody gets a job. On this generalization, anybody that gets a job usually gets it because of somebody they know. Mm -hmm. Like, that gets a good job. You know, because, I mean, both sides are just more comfortable with the situation. And if you can shore up and create new relationships on there, just like everything, it's engagement and relationships. It's anything with social media, you know. And, and this, it's another tool to do that instead of going to, or in addition to going to mixers and networking things young urban professional mixers and, and such like that um and i think uh i mean it works i can tell you it works since i since i have uh, uh shored up mine i've had several opportunities come from linkedin so uh yeah yeah but i mean i'm kind of in a way that i can take small opportunities to yeah. you know and not looking for the nine to fiver to replace my nine to fiver of which is both are non-existent. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, it's, it's one way you kind of think about it. So, okay. Uh, we do have a couple of stories here. We do. We, we do. Will you pick the first one? I'll pick the second one. Okay. Windows 10. There has been some confusion. I'm still confused. And I'm, I'm glad that you added this to the, I'm less confused. So no, this is the part I got and they clarified this. So, so, Obviously, if you have uh, Windows 7 or 8, you're getting um, that little Windows icon popping up in the corner, presuming you have a nice legitimized copy of Windows. I have one that has some issues with the licensing. Not, it's not illegal. I just put it in wrong, okay? It's, it's just something I did, okay? I, didn't, I am not stealing a copy. I just forgot to install Windows XP, and it won't accept my upgrade key first. Anyways, we're going to fix that. Sorgatron Media is stealing. No, no, no. I think <laughs> I, I there is no license used here that I think is it's I should not say any of this stuff on air. Uh, sh don't tell me out on it. But no, I, I think everything is is from a legit copy. It's not pulling a, a double thing or everything is online on Adobe Cloud. So I can't even screw that up. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, I might have a disc from college that might not be the, on the up and up, but I, I'm <laughs> not using it. A three, so. Is that a three and a half or five and a quarter? Uh, a DVD, CD, <laughs> oh, probably. Oh, okay. C- CD, probably. I mean, you know, I mean, you went to college. You know how the, mm-hmm. you know how the uh, the the markered uh, Photoshop copies floated around school or or zip drive or whatever it was. I miss zip drives. <laughs> I watched Godzilla. The jazz drive. Did you watch Godzilla? The no. new Godzilla, I watched it over the weekend, and there's a point where they're like, something happened 15 years ago, and they had to go get the data, and it's just a stack of zip drives. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> they're never getting that back. And then, like, two scenes later, it's like, they found a zip drive! Was it SCSI or, par- or Parallel oh, it looked like It looked like the later USB one. Okay. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To get, I'm sorry about that. Um, no, if you don't know what a zip drive is, you have not experienced pain. Um, Google iOmega zip drive. <laughs> I don't make a zip drive and <laughs> click of death. <laughs> click of death was oh, the big I hated thing. that. Uh, those discs weren't cheap. Apparently the Art Institute was the founder of the click of death that I went to. So anyways, <laughs> what the heck were, I, oh, oh, so Windows 10. Anyways, Windows 10. I didn't even get to, I didn't even finish the thing. So if, oh, so if you get that, you, you, you have your place in line, you have that copy, you're good. You're going to get it. Okay. Any Windows 7 or 8.1 user. Any assistant, yeah, Windows 7 or 8.1 user. Uh, supposedly everybody within the first year of its release will be able to do this. I don't and if know. you're still on 8, you're allowed to upgrade to 8.1 to then get in line. So you have to get the 8.1 to get in line. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. Um, now, if you don't have a copy readily available, here's the workaround. So Windows 10 Preview Edition, if you go sign up with your Microsoft account that you'll be using, to the Microsoft Insiders program, go get the technical preview that they currently have released, and you, when when it comes around for the release, you will be able to update or reinstall or something on that computer from the technical preview to the official legitimate copy of Windows 10. This is where it gets interesting to me. Because, I, again, I have the one with a weirdly legitimate but illegitimate in practice copy of Windows 7. And for, you know, in a blue screens every time I put a Windows XP disk in there for some reason. So I, I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. And the code, and actually it's because the code, white, uh, the legitimate code for Windows 7 uh, rubbed off the bottom of the laptop. So, I mean, I, you're stuck. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. But I can go get a technical, pre- technically, I think I'm right. Go get a technical preview of that. Throw it on this laptop. Throw it on boot camp on my MacBook. That's where it gets interesting, right? And I'll be able to update to the legitimate copy, and now I have copies for those computers that I didn't before. And in the, the article, and this is where I'm confused. So even the article you have here from The Verge, okay, was then updated at 9:45 a.m. on June 21st. <laughs> because I think after that, uh, somebody made Microsoft clarify this process, and I think there's a little bit more to it. Yet. And I, I heard one of the things I heard today was. You you have to stay on the insider. You that's can stay right. slow that ring. Is, that's can, the other thing. You can go slow ring or fast ring. Right. But you have to stay that is the on other the thing. insider program. You will always be on the insider program. You will always get the pre-release, not final versions. Yes. But that hasn't been too big of an issue. And I would totally agree with that, especially if you're going slow ring. But you said you can do slow. I didn't even know this was an option. So slow ring is you get up. You don't get it like alpha. You get like beta or close to release, right? Yeah. It's kind of like wait for that later edition of Yosemite Mac OS X before you jump on because they've worked out all the big bugs by now. They have two different. If you're familiar with um, Apple's Apple Seed program versus the developer program, it's kind of along those lines where you're on a different release cycle and your release cycle is the bug fixes for the last beta whereas for the the bug fixes for the last developer beta without the new enhancements that are part of the new developer beta Mm -hmm. so so it kind of gives you a little more stability i will say i ran i'm i'm running slow ring right kraus is running fast ring of course he is (laughs) Of course he is, and he's had to. He has had to rebuild his laptop once. So and, and so, don't do is, this. Don't do this on your main business computer. This is, this is go out and download VirtualBox or yeah. go grab a, an extra machine. Yeah, with, I mean, this is like I'm throwing this as my secondary OS on my MacBook and on an older laptop that I would like to have updated because mm-hmm. I think it still has some life left in it, right? And we'll see. Maybe it won't. 
Maybe, maybe I'll put this on and it'll just not work. It runs on an atom based processor. I know, I know, but I think there might be a hardware problem with this computer okay. too. So I think, like, I, I, like I said, it blue screens when it tries to learn a Windows XP setup program. The, so, the interesting thing about the Insider program too is, is they they actually do a lot of voting and and a lot of uh, gathering feedback, but they're not slow about it at, at all. Really? So they'll contact the insiders via Twitter or via whatever and say. You can get you can get a fast ring update tomorrow, mm-hmm. but we know that every AMD video card is going to have an issue and potentially reboot on occasion until we get it fixed. So read. What the do release, you guys want? So read the release notes. Every well, no, time, they'll right? say what do you guys want? And yeah. The, depending on the responses, will be depending if they release it. Mm. So it's all about majority and and feedback and everything like that. They just did it, I think, with Windows Phone too. Usually about three to four days. If they release something that they know is broke, after about three to four days, they will get a fixed version and the slow ring user group will get that more polished fixed version versus the fast ring. Do do you mind putting up with some random reboots and, and blue screen type issues in your build? Um, that being said, to your point, I mean... Uh, other than software and some drivers not being ready for Windows 10, so again, it's not. I a, haven't seen again. Haven't seen I'm not putting issues. it on a primary or 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 anything like that. This is just like it'd be nice to have this on. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, our couple of Android fanboys have dropped into our Periscope of uh, Does this hold up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> they missed our Apple uh, uh, Fun Fest earlier in the show, um, so I can't wait for them to listen back and call us out on that. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some. My, my, I don't know if you want to go to the next article or not. Sure, sure. Yeah, we'll do one more, and then we're gonna have to get out of here. No, I'm not getting on. Oh, no, no, I'm not leaving the couch. You're not leaving the couch. I'm, All right, let's. I'm, I'm, I'm staging a sit-in. Hey, actually, if you want to talk E3 with us, stick around. I can't, unfortunately. Uh. But my the last one was Samsung. So on the Android front, came out with a really cool app that's out in the. In the I think it's in Google Play. Um, it might be in the Samsung Store. But they now have a screen recording app Mm -hmm. that allows you that actually, obviously, it only works on Samsung devices. Uh And they've actually written it so it only really works with games. But it allows you to to record your gameplay. You can even kind of put in a it will actually record off the forward facing camera um, to do kind of reviews. And then or you can do let's plays. Yeah, you can you can. Pick the, the, the front camera and image. You can pick the audio source being the microphone or game I audio. Know somebody with a Samsung phone. And actually, he has a gear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the poor, poor soul um, that made me doing Let's Play videos recently at, at Riz Plays on Twitter. Um, but anyway. I, w- I was pretty impressed because this goes. So it's obviously S, S6, mm-hmm. um, the Note 4, but it goes back to the S5, the Note 3, the S4, and the Note 2. So it's going back three years wow. to support this kind of stuff. So I, I really think you, you look at your Twitches and you look at your your YouTube going into the gaming arena, trying to get more gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and video. that's there was it was I was saying this because they were talking about let's play videos on one of the podcasts I was listening to the other day, and they're like, oh, nobody's doing it on on the iPhone or anything. I was like, actually, there's a game called Asphalt. Asphalt 8, I think it is. And I played with this. I, I, somewhere there's, there's a Twitch channel that I started. And it has a few videos of it. And and, and, it's, and it used the front-facing camera. And it has you in the corner. And, and the thing is, you're using the the, the game the, the whole phone as a steering wheel. Mm-hmm. So you see yourself like tilting <laughs> Tilt. in the camera as you're playing. Uh, it was it, it worked pretty good, too. And, mm-hmm. and it was just on this uh, 5S. It was probably about a year ago that I was playing with that. So, I mean, it's there. Mm-hmm. Games were starting to do that. Do this. I mean, the conversation unfortunately boiled down to: Do we want to pe- see people playing Candy Crush? It's like, guys, they're doing action games. Come on, they're doing yeah. a little bit more. Although, I mean, a lot of people are watching Hearthstone for some reason. So, people that. watch Minecraft. That's true. It's That's huge. true. But again, you know, you know, people, uh, you know what? I shouldn't bash on the Hearthstone because I realize how many people watch Magic mm-hmm. games being played, and that's. Basically, I think what it is, Hearthstone is like a card game. It's based on World okay. of Warcraft, etc. It's free. Try it out. It's good. We have some hilarious commercials on TV recently. Um, but, but anyways, no, that's cool. That's awesome. And and I, I've been playing with. It. I kind of want to start a Lost Play channel. Well, and I'm hoping I'm hoping other people pick this this up 
and and it it's kind of sad that samsung's the one that kind of kicked this off and it's only for samsung devices mm -hmm. i feel like they could do a, a lot of companies could benefit from this right i almost feel like hey if you have a samsung device you get it for free and it's 99 cents for everybody else um something along those lines yeah but i mean it is what it is obviously all right, go check that out. Uh, if you have any Samsung devices, let us know. Try it out. I know there's a couple a couple of you guys out there, at least with the gaming podcast, that do. Uh, I'd love to see your Let's Play videos if you're doing anything like that, um, or reviews, or whatever the case may be. Maybe you can contribute to insertcointobegin.com. So uh, we had a great conversation on Awesome Chat. We recorded right before this. I'll probably release it by Thursday this week, so please keep an eye out for that at awesomecast.net. Uh, we had our friend Chris Whitlatch from the Pittsburgh Foundation on that very couch. I made him. I made him have a slice of gonzo. I made him. He's like, I like my, I like my, my pepperoni. I like it simple. I'm like, you need to try this, good sir. Anyways, uh, but it's about PSAs and podcasting. We're actually kind of filling out on the idea. So if you're a podcaster out there, please go check that out. We're looking for feedback. Um, they're trying to figure out a platform for releasing and getting podcasters involved and just helping to get good messages out from nonprofits um, and just doing some good for the community. Uh, I'm sure whenever it launches, we'll be part of the pilot in whatever function we can. <laughs> You know, um, so it actually got me thinking. It's like, you know, I've done a few PSAs for some groups around the area. I think I'm, I think we might just start running them at, at the very least, you know. Uh, so so go check that out. I love to hear you guys' uh, input um, as podcasters or as podcast listeners. Would you like to hear some of this stuff? Or, you know, we talked about, like, being creative with it and, and, and kind of, like, where's the audience uh, versus what we're getting on TV and, and a little bit of history of what PS, PSAs are on television. A really interesting conversation there. Check out everything. We've had some great interviews over the last few weeks over at Awesome Chat. Um, so all, all, all the way back, you mentioned you jag off earlier. He was our first, uh, awesome chatter. So please go check that out. I don't know how many episodes we've done because I'm not numbering them. I've been on this thing where I'm not <laughs> numbering podcasts these days. Hmm. Like between this, Were they at least a date. No, 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 Nothing. it's just, this is the person we talked to. This is the subject for the day, especially the daily one too. Mm -hmm. and I got to thinking, I was like, how many of these have I done? I've been doing them for about a year. It's a different name. Let's go look at the feed, mm -hmm. see how many are in there. So, well, that kind of makes I guess even more sense because a lot of things are relevant will stay relevant. And why would you worry That's about true too. ordering the via number? That is true too, especially on on that one since we talk about a lot of like kind of social media technology concepts and mm -hmm. not necessarily news all the time. So it, it's a like today's was um, do I really need to pay for social media? And we had a conversation about should I be paying for boost ads, dark posts, et cetera, et cetera. And I kind of took it as an angle that I'm very familiar with as doing social media for a company or as yourself. And you don't have money to pay for all those ads. Because mm -hmm. honestly, ads aren't, I'm getting into the conversation, but ads aren't worth it unless you got a lot of money to put into it is my perception on it. Somebody will hate me for that, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it to hear from Doug because he's the guy, he's my uh, go-to for that. But because I know he's been experimenting with that. But uh, check out everything else going on. Awesomecast.net, uh, SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, maybe some new shows. <gasps> it's always scary when new I say shows? that, isn't it? That's okay. We have clients now. We're doing them for clients. It's not just me trying to run a new podcast every morning and burning myself out like I did a couple months ago. Um, but uh, but no, there might be some new stuff I, I get to announce here as we uh, are in the launching process and trying to figure that out with some new people. So we're having a lot of fun there. And a few very different subjects. And I get involved, and you'll see a very different side of what I do, um, I think, uh, as part of that. I'm, I'm kind of the, the Robin on this the the uh the producer side co-host thing that that gets the questions thrown at them you know kind that's of thing. cool so i'm not the primary so that's i'm trying not to be people are sick of this right you know you know my, my voice on every on every podcast is uh i'm sure you know and i don't and I, don't, I, don't, I don't get bored with it i mean i i do listen to a number of the different podcasts and it, i think there's a good mix up mm -hmm. oh i always worry because i remember one time where i listened to so many shows at leo laporte and i love leo laporte but i just like I can't. I'm listening to nine hours of Leo Laporte every week. <laughs> this is not. No, no. You know, I had the same problem with Tom Mayer for a while. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's it's uh, you know, you just hear a lot of voices. You know, there's probably I can think there's probably three or four people that I listen to more than four hours of them in a week. 
So I think that's my limit. Anyways, enough of that. Awesomecast.net. Check out social medias. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, Facebook group. Uh, follow us. Subscribe to us. All the links for iTunes, etc., YouTube, all that stuff. And even I put little players on there, too, for awesomecast.net. So you can check out the latest episode. I think I have both the Awesome Chat and Awesome Cast on there. I will soon if I haven't yet. And you can find all that right there. Follow Sorgatron Media on Clamor. I don't talk about this enough. We're on Clamor, guys. You can get a little tidbits of everything we do around here. Sometimes I do a little preview, and I forgot to do that today, I realized. Um, all that stuff. Awesomecast.net, SorgatronMedia.com. Thank you, Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitters. That's where I can be found, John Chilla on the Facebook. Yeah, at Sorgatron. We'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome chat room. Uh, you've been our awesome. awesome audience. Thank you, our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.